Hello and welcome to our channel. Today I have something very special for you, as you could already guess from the video title. Recently I decided to study a subject of laptop server concept and it actually looks very cool on paper with many upsides. Because when we look at the list of pros and cons I've put together on our website, pros are portability, as most of the laptops are small and portable. Next pro is that laptops are very energy efficient. Most of them have batteries that will act as a built-in UPS. Laptops are much quieter compared to desktop platforms and server platforms. And after all, they have a built-in keyboard, mouse, and a screen. So there is no need for a KVM or a spare keyboard with a monitor. But as with every project out there, there are downsides as well. Performance would not be as good as it would be on the desktop or a server. Laptops are not very good with scaling up and there's only one single Ethernet port on most of the machines out there. Then as well, after doing some digging on the web, I realized that many Boomer admins aren't very supportive of the laptop server idea. This is, for example, a comment from Quora. Nonetheless, I still wanted to go ahead and try this out. The first thing I decided to try was the free BSD as a hypervisor because of the small footprint, low resource consumption, native ZFS support and jails. It worked good and all, but it was the time for me to move on to try other things. Right after that, Proxmox appeared on my list and it worked even better, specifically with regards to the power management and fan control. The laptop was running much cooler and quieter than it was with FreeBSD. It may be just because I'm new to FreeBSD and couldn't get the power management right the first time. No hate, please. The Proxmox installation and configuration required some tinkering, but in the end, I was able to run Windows, Linux and BSD guests with a much better performance than, say, running the same guests under VirtualBox on this laptop with Ubuntu 20.04 as a host operating system. I didn't do anything fancy during the installation process from the ISO, apart from choosing ZFS as my file system. But these are the steps I had to take afterwards in order to get the most out of Proxmox on my laptop server. On the left, we have a blog post that's going to be linked in the description. And on the right, we have SSH session to our Proxmox server. I mean, laptop. It's actually a virtual box VM, but it will work just fine for the demonstration. And I didn't feel like reinstalling the laptop at the moment. So first off, we need to remove the Proxmox Enterprise repos and add the Proxmox non sub repos, because I would imagine that you didn't buy the license for your laptop for this purpose. Just copy everything line by line and execute it in the terminal. Next two steps are optional but recommended. For example, in the first one, I'm going to be adding a fresh cluster fast seven repository. And in the second one, I'll generate additional local because I'm using Linux as my daily driver. And if I wouldn't follow this step, it will give me some errors during the SSH sessions. Again, just copy the lines one by one and execute them in the terminal. Next, we need to install some small software utilities. For example, if updown2 will help you reload the network configuration without restarting the Proxmox host. Next on the list, we have a laptop specific tuning. For example, TLP will help with a better power management and battery monitoring. And one of the dependencies of TLP is a network manager, which we don't need on Proxmox. That's why we're going to disable it. And the next command after that will ensure that it's never enabled again, because I was a witness to a weird thing where during the upgrade, it will re-enable itself automatically. Next three lines will keep your laptop up and running when the lid is closed, because by default, Proxmox will send your laptop to sleep whenever you close the laptop lid. Just copy them and paste them in. TLP stat has nothing to do with the setup itself, but it will help you monitor the power source of your laptop and then how much charge you have left on your battery. Next, we need to tune ZFS to use a small amount of RAM, 512 megabytes in this case. And I've been running this box for about a year now. 
I didn't have any data loss or any other issues. I even tried to unplug the battery directly just to kind of stress test the machine and it was doing just fine. As usual, just copy the line, insert it into the terminal, press enter. And next up on the list is a system upgrade and restart. The setup is almost done. Now that machine came back, let's log back in. And let's check the arc stat. And in my case, it applied successfully. But if your didn't, just run update init RAM FS minus U. It will do the trick. Then don't forget to reboot the system. And just like that, you've got a working laptop server setup that we can now successfully use in our home lab. If you have any questions, comments, or maybe some ZFS best practices thoughts, leave them down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one.